Hello guys, welcome to Unity Programming Tutorials. Today we're going to see how to implement a really simple fog of war. We won't be dealing with complex shaders or visibility calculations or anything like that. It's just an effect to review the map as the player moves around. Uh, let me show you the final version. So as you can see, the map is being reviewed as we move around. So this method consists in only change the vertex colors of a mesh and set it to transparent as the player moves. Uh, it makes a cool effect for hiding the map though. Okay, without further ado, let's get into the implementation. Okay, just start a brand new scene. First of all, let's create a plane for the ground and set its scale to something like 5. Let's create a cube that will be our player. Let's move it up a little bit. And we need a really simple script to move the cube around. So let's create it now. This script will be really simple. We won't be using any rigid bodies or physics. Uh, we need just to read the uh, horizontal and vertical inputs and then use these values to translate our cube here we multiply the input values by the speed and the delta time so we can get the or speeding units per second and we, now we just translate the transform using these values and that's it and let's not forget to set the speed as public let's set the speed to something like 3 before testing let's move our camera to get a better view of the scene let's try to get a top view of uh, our player and the map yeah something like this let's create a new material and give the ground some color i guess that's that's fine let's test our scene we should have a cube that moves around it seems to be working as expected Let's move on. Before we start the implementation, I'll make a quick explanation of how the algorithm should work. Here in this drawing, you can see we have the fog layer, the camera, and our player. The fog layer is just uh, a mesh plane with a bunch of vertices. So the first thing is to shoot a ray from the camera to the player and we compute the intersection with the ray and the fog plane here and we search for the vertices that are close to the intersection point and uh, change their alpha to transparent okay back to unity now we need to create our fog plane we can just duplicate the ground and put it uh, uh, between the camera and the player and we also need to create a material for it it's important to pick a material that allows us to set the alpha so we can change a, its transparency i just pick it the alpha blended material and set it to a full black color and apply it to the mesh you can see we can play with the alpha values to get some transparency and we'll be doing this via script one thing that's worth mentioning is that the unit plane doesn't have enough vertices to create a smooth transition between the alpha and the black areas to get a good result we need a plane with a lot of segments so i recommend it to use a 3d software to create the plane and add a lot of segments or even the prop builder that it's included inside the unity now the last thing we have to do before implementing is to create a new layer let's call it fog of war 
This is only for optimization purposes, so we can set our arrays to collide only with this layer. Ok, let's create our new fog of war script and put it in the camera. Ok, first let's declare some public variables that we will need. Uh, a reference for the fog of war plane. Uh, we also need a reference to our player and the layer mask for the fog layer and uh, float with a radius value the radius indicates how big is the area around the player that will be revealed let's also create a radius squared you'll see later why this will be useful Now let's declare some private variables to store some information about the mesh like the array of vertices and the array of colors. Okay, that's all variables we need. Now let's create some methods. Uh, let's start with the initialize method. Here we'll get a reference for the vertices of the mesh and create our uh, array of colors. We start by accessing the mesh filter of the fog of war plane and its mesh. Next, we get a reference for its vertices and initialize our array of colors with the size of the vertices array. Let's initialize all colors to black. We can't do this by using a for loop. This will guarantee that our fog of war plane will initialize with all black. I'll create a new method to set the colors of the mesh. So anytime we need to update the mesh colors, we just call this method. Okay, let's call it here after we change our vertices to black. And let's not forget to call the initialize method here on start. Okay, now we need to implement the update method. Here things uh, start to get a bit more complex. First, we have to cast a ray from the camera to the player. We can do that by creating a ray and setting its origin to our transform position. And we can subtract the player position to the transform position to get a vector pointing to the player. We also need a recast hit variable to store information about the intersection point. Now we can cast a ray using the physics recast function and passing our array, maximum distance, and our mask layer that will filter the collisions with the fog layer. Okay, now we need to compute the distance of the intersection point to all the vertices of the mesh. Here there is a lot of space to optimizations to avoid comparison with all vertices, but we we'll just make it simple and uh, compare with all of them. Okay, now we need to get the vertices position in world coordinates uh, because our intersection point is also in world coordinates and we want to compare them both. We can do that by using the transform point function. It changes our position from local to world coordinates. Now let's compute the distance between the intersection point and the vertices. Here we, we use the square magnitude that is faster than computing the distance because it avoids the use of a square root. So if the distance is less uh, than our square radius, we can change the alpha of the vertex. Here we have to use the mean function to avoid the map 
becoming black again after the player left the area. That means the alpha value of a vertex can't increase, only get smaller. And we can set the alpha by the distance uh, divided by the radius square. This way the alpha will be lower if the vertex is closer to the intersection point. Now we need just to update the colors of the mesh. And that's it. Let's compile and test if this is working. First let's set up our public variables. We need a reference to our fog plane and player. And also set the fog layer mask. Let's test it now. Here we can see it seems to be working, but it's not very pretty. That's because uh, the, the unit plane doesn't have enough vertices to make a really nice transition. We can fix that by creating a new plane in ProBuilder and adding more segments to it. To do this, let's disable a fog plane and if you don't have the ProBuilder installed, you can use the package manager to install it and then go to tools and open the ProBuilder menu. After that, you create a, a plane. Let's set its size to 50 and about 40 segments. That should be enough. Let's move it to the center. Here it's okay and uh, up a little bit. Let's change the material using the ProBuilder Material Editor. We can just drag the material to an empty slot and hit the, the button. Let's set the plane layer to fog of war and update the reference in our script. Okay, that's it. Let's test it again. Oh, here you can see it's much nicer. Uh, the effect is, is smoother than before because they, we have a grid that's more dense and have a lot of more vertices. Let me show you how this looks like in a more complete scene. Here's a prototype I was working on. You can see it gives a really nice atmosphere to the game and it's really easy to implement. So that's all. I hope you all enjoyed the video. You can find the link for the code in the video description. So thank you for watching. Bye.